Can I just point out that the boys have been performing to just manage? Stay to the end of the video for the laws on neons and undergrowth. I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I do it again. Add it up, add it up. Yo guys, what is up and welcome back to a new video. Now if you want to know what neons or underglow could look like on your modified car, then this is the video for you. We're gonna run through the installation process and we're gonna show you just how sick my Focus ST is today's example can look with neons and underglow back from the 90s. Now the max power days was where it sat in the car scene, but the question is, can we bring back neon lights to 2021? Guys, big shout out to BD Performance. Big shout out to Auto Beam. Let's get it done. What the bloody <laughs> hell are you doing? Why do you want to do that? So Ben, as untidy as that might look, it's taken us the best part of half an hour to try and work out the different ways of relaying this. So yeah. that when we put it on the car, it all goes round in the right direction. It's just it important yeah. that we've got, you know, it all set up and everything's right sure. in our minds before we go sticking them on the car sure. and ruining the tape. So, yeah. you know, I think we're good to go now. But we've done the work so that they don't have to. Yeah. So that's okay. So guys, there is an aerial shot that you've just seen as well just a couple of seconds ago. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it all on the car. We're gonna try and make it work to my car specifically, and then we can show you as to why we've done it, how we've done it, and all the things that you should avoid and not avoid. So Ben, let's get started. I appreciate your help. Thank you very much. So I mentioned to you that doing the front splitter was certainly my port of call in regards to the first thing that we do. My initial worry was if we broke this, then technically we rip off the underglow. But that is kind of the way it has to be, guys, unfortunately, is that if you want it to follow the surrounds of the car, it's gonna be important that you attach it to the contours of the car. So let's get this done. We'll center it, and hopefully we can run you guys through maybe the things that we come across and the things that we think you should avoid doing. So finding the center, I guess, is the key which is what Ben's doing now. So we take both ends, we find the center really yeah, easily. Okay. You take the long cable there, which is the direction we need. For sure. This is the center. So should we start taping it from one side? So if I bring the tape off well, in yeah, here. I, I, I peel the tape off and go from the middle, otherwise we're gonna essentially not get okay. the center correctly. So you found the center. Ooh. Yeah. Are we good? Are we good? At least being a brand new splitter, this thing is clean as hell. So it's, yeah, that's a big help. Obviously, if you haven't got a brand new splitter, make sure you clean it. So guys, one of the first things you'll notice when it comes to the Auto Beam Underglow kit is these tiny little rubber brackets right here. They've got the tiniest, dinkiest of screws, which you can barely even see. I don't know if you can from there, it's very unlikely. But those are gonna be used to hold in I suppose what the self-adhesive probably can't manage. And obviously with all weather conditions as well and vibration in the car, it's gonna be sensible to have these screwed in. I'm gonna be extra careful with Lee and Ben's help and make sure that these are permanently fixed. But yeah, we're gonna try these out, see how well they fix and uh, update you guys in the meantime. Right, so we're trying to evenly space it onto the side skirt. Taking this off, making sure that there's enough space. Like so. There's method in Ben's madness, I assure you. So about two and a half inches off each side, which is perfect, very much even. And the joy as well with the side skirts is that we can have those tiny little screws go right into it, obviously add the security, but at the same time not affect it visually. So it's fantastic. Very chuffed with that. And so far the auto beam kit has been brilliant. So Ben's coming in here with the drill and I will hand him a bunch of these rubber mounts and a ton of these little screws. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You got some in your mouth? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect your proudest moment of BD building the GCM show car. Hey. <laughs> yes, that's a tyre. Guys, you can see that Ben's putting one on each side to start off with, and then we can start to space them out. I really am noticing all the different dents on this car. There's nothing like having a car up in the air to help you spot dents. Now guys, because I'm a bit of a fool and I forgot to film it, we're gonna show you now what we did on the rear of the car, because when we did it at BD, for some reason, I didn't get around to doing it, so I'm going to go into the car now and show you the unique, special metal bracket that we fabricated with Ben's help in order to get the actual underglow working in the best way for my Focus ST. Now this might apply for a lot of you guys as well if you have body kit modifications, but let's go onto the car and I'll show you exactly what I mean. <laughs> right, so if you guys see here, there's actually a metal bracket that we got to go from one side of the diffuser to the other. Now here, the cable ties meant that we didn't actually need to use 
the actual screws provided. So, little metal bracket goes from one side to the other. That meant that we didn't have to have it all the way inside the car, meaning that the lights accurately glowed on the floor the way that we wanted them to. So if you have a Focus ST, I'd suggest you do that. Get a little metal bracket, attach it with cable ties. Obviously the self-adhesive tape works as well, but it just means that when you get the glow of the underglow around the car, it's gonna be even. So I'd highly recommend that you give that a go. So I apologize for not getting that in earlier. So at this point, Ben and Lee have to take out the battery, take out the surroundings and undo the strut brace. While lifting up the scuttle panel, he had to find a way to get the Bluetooth transmitter that communicates to your phone in order to change the colors of the underglow and put it through the firewall. Naturally, with the heat of the engine bay and of course the weather coming through any of the holes in the front of the car, it makes sense to put it as far away and as safely as possible. In this particular instance, we managed to secure it efficiently using cable ties that you will see in the next clip. Thank you. Guys, the moment of truth. Ben's just going to use a 13 to secure it to the battery. Can I just point out the boys at BD Performance have just managed? Big shout out to BD and big shout out to Autobeam because it's now working. Let's take it down and see how sick it looks. Right guys, I'm so chuffed. The car is now finished. The auto beam neons are now complete. Big, big shout out to Ben and the rest of the team here at BD Performance. But before we bring the car down, turn off the lights and look at how good it looks off the ramp, I thought I'd go across with Ben and just explain really briefly to those of you that didn't understand how we went about doing it, the things that we'd avoid doing, and maybe some tips to you guys in case you wanted to try this on your car. So Ben, let's get it off the tripod, let's go around the car and let's show them exactly what we did. Okay, so Ben, obviously we started on the front splitter. What would you suggest to anyone watching in regards to what they should do to make it best suit them or their car? couple of main points really obviously first of all make sure the surface is really clean so the tape adheres properly and secondly if it's not covering the full area of the bumper or splitter or wherever you're yeah. attaching it to make sure you centralize that for sure uh, the strip so that you get e even coverage right so obviously across. here we've actually got this much gap we've got an empty space yeah. but that much gap is also the same on the other side now this being a new splitter it's obviously a lot easier but i'd suggest to you guys that if you are going to be using the splitter to attach it for you make sure that splitter is so clean obviously the 3m tape has the best chance at sticking now the kit provided although it works we suggest using screws just a little bit bigger, that way it'll hold. I don't think those small screws are that good. They do work, but I want reliability. I want prolonged efficiency when it comes to the kit that I've installed on my Focus ST for the content we do here on YouTube. So Ben, would you agree on the screws a little bit bigger? Yeah, definitely. I think we found that they were pulling through because the, the mounts are sort of rubberized. They yeah. were just pulling through and you know they probably, sure. they probably wouldn't last. The other point I suppose to make here is if you're going onto something like a splitter like this, yeah. is to be careful that your uh, screw doesn't come out the other for side. Sure. Especially being at the fact this is a new splitter we only installed today. Ben, would you mind if I just take your place for a second? Do you mind yeah. if I just move over here? So guys, when fitting it first off you want to make sure the 3m tape is doing its job you then use the rubber mounts to secure it in place now you don't need to worry about actually doing any wiring straight away leave that hanging go around the car and make sure it all fits perfectly now you guys can see earlier that we did actually lie on the floor using the drone which made it so much easier we then went to the back which we're going to go and show you now where we used a custom fabricated metal mount obviously guys in the other video you saw that we fitted the max and design side spats now while they might have appeared to become useful we didn't actually actually need to use them for the auto beam underglow. Now Ben, when we actually got around to doing this before we actually started filming, yeah. we thought it best to have the lights in a position that wasn't too far away from the road, but also wasn't on the jaggedy edge of the diffuser. Yeah, so you what did you, you do? Be, yeah, you don't want to be able to see, physically see the tape from outside, sure, you just sure. want the glow. So we wanted to set it back underneath the diffuser somewhat, yeah. but not by going 
um, all the way up to the boot floor. Mm. So we, we've literally just cut a strip of aluminium yeah. and used the existing bumper mount about just to span bit. it across. But I think that was the best option in regards to that. Sure. So consider really planning ahead when it goes to yourself fitting an underglow kit at home because ideally you want it to look seamless around those edges. So let's move over to the sides and show you what we did there. Now, Ben, just coming over to the side skirts here, what would you suggest to those viewers at home when doing it themselves? Because not everyone has access to a ramp like you do. No, definitely. So once you've, basically you want to, again, like the front, you need to centralize it, make mm -hmm. sure you've got an equal amount of, of overhang or, or empty space at either end. For sure. Um, but when it actually comes to sticking it, I would probably suggest peeling the tape off in small sections at a time while you're sticking it on just so that you don't peel it all the way off and you know you drop the adhesive onto the floor and it loses its stick for sure so like we were saying earlier guys the seamless transition between the lights going around is so important you don't want to have a giant gap on one side and not on the other the idea with the neons and the underglow is to have the underside of the car glowing all at once for example guys i've seen all kinds of bodge jobs on the internet and i wanted to make sure that with bead performance's help both ben callum lee and darren we all thought let's do this properly so this is what we've tried to do today now the main part guys is doing all the wires hiding them so they're not next to any moving parts or anything that could be hot so let's move over to the necessary area and show them what we did so ben now we're under the car what was it that you did that you would suggest to them they do when they're at home so like you mentioned earlier, really, just make sure you avoid any moving parts or anything that's going to get hot, like the exhaust. Um, when it comes to this section here in particular, we have, we've come across uh, the, the subframe, which meant going a little bit closer maybe to the exhaust than we'd have liked to. So we have actually added some extra trunking for just for good measure, just to make sure, sure. there's no issues in the future. Yeah, so obviously when doing the battery as well, is there anything you'd suggest to them? Because you put mine behind the battery cover or behind the battery box itself? I've tucked it right in behind the battery, yeah, so there's no chance of it. You know, it's as far away from the engine as we can possibly get it. For sure. Um, it's away from, you know, any weather that comes through the front grills or anything like that. So it's, yeah, it's nicely tucked away, away from heat and away from the, the rain, yeah. Absolutely. So we may as well get to the most exciting part now, which is getting the car off the ramp, driving into the centre of the room and turning off those lights. Alan, do you want to get the light? see my car is in a very dark space and I had to borrow a garage off a friend now I'm back from Billy Performance and we're going to be using an app right here provided the camera focuses called Magic LED we're going to click on that one and as you can see there's a vast option of different colors you can use on the color board now we're going to start off by pressing on like so if I move my phone away you'll quickly see that it's got the uh, the mixed colors I don't quite know what you'd call that but rainbow if you like now if I bring my phone back into shot, you'll see that I can go across the color board and change to all different colors. Now picture yourself at a car meet. You can choose any color you like to gain the attention of all the car scene fanatics at your particular event. Now guys, of course you're all impatient. You want to know what Owen the policeman's got to say on the laws of neons and underglow. So let's swiftly move over to him. Right now you've watched the video and thank you for getting this far into it. And you will now know that George has fitted the auto beam underglow and neons to the car. Um, and well, whether you like it or not, uh, and it's very split on that one, um, it's on there. And George has asked me to just give you a bit of an overview as to the law on fitting neons and underglow. Now it's really complicated because it comes under the vehicle lighting regs and there are regulations about how high lights can be and all sorts of stuff around the vehicle. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail, I'm gonna generalize. Generalizing, you can't have a visible LED on the car. Um, so that kind of deals with that because they're tucked in underneath. Now, what I would say is save them for the meets and save them for the shows, okay? Use them for static use within the car meets and the shows because if you take them out onto the road, then you are potentially falling foul of those vehicle lighting regs and, and therefore you're possibly gonna get yourself into trouble. Now, in the future, we're gonna look at a full video all about lighting and regulations all around the car. So we can look at the headlights, we can look at the rear lights and tinting, and we can look at 
all these different things but for now for neons and underglow let's just keep it simple save them for the show save them for the meets when you go to drive out onto the roads just switch them off and then you're not going to fall foul of any of those problems if you've got any questions on neons and underglow then put them in the comments below and we will look at those and we will do our best to answer those in forthcoming videos and go into some more detail that might be able to help you but for now hopefully that's addressed the general questions about neons and underglow right guys so thank you so much for watching today's video of course a big shout out to mps messenger for helping us out with the laws and the rules around neons and underglow but guys of course bd performance and auto beam you have helped us out yet again and we love you all so if you guys want to get your hands on a unique kit just like that i'm pretty sure they might be sold out just for now but i will include a link in the description section below and of course if i can get my hands on a discount code i will stick one there too so as always guys if you haven't already smash a thumbs up on today's video let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section below and consider subscribing if you like this kind of content we are taking over the car scene guys myself and owen are here to help if you enjoy this kind of stuff hopefully you join the gcm community but of course we'll see you in the next video but for now gcm roll the outro peace